Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Yankee Stadium. How's it going, everybody? Welcome back. I would like to congratulate the Yankees on not playing down to their competition last night and remaining in first place. If they had lost last night, they'd be a half game out. So good start from Garrett Cole. Obviously left with the calf cramping, but he should be fine. Uh, We had a pretty good offensive day. Eight runs scored. The Rangers have really struggled offensively this year. They've kind of gone in the toilet over the last few months, which is surprising because their offense was so ridiculous last year, especially during the postseason. And I'm not going to lie. I was sweating when they brought in Clay Holmes, even with a five-run lead and a runner on first base and one out. I was thinking, oh, man. Don't blow this. I, it, it's just, it's not a good sign because my confidence is shot. Now, no closer is perfect. Even Mariano Rivera would blow saves, and you know, he would have a, a week every season where he couldn't get anybody out. You know, everybody who watched the Yankees religiously during that time, like I did, I'm sure remembers, he would have these ruts where he just couldn't get anybody out. And they would last about a week, and there might be a second short period throughout the season. But other than that, he was money. Uh, and Clay Holmes just never has that period where he's good. It's always it's always a high wire act. Even when his stats are good, there's balls being hit hard, there's walks, there's traffic on the bases, and it just makes me nervous. But the Yankees were able to hang on and win, but they got to take a look at the bullpen going forward. So we got some more details on the Martian. Apparently there's some rules in the CBA that even if he wins Rookie of the Year next year, He's not going to be eligible uh, to earn the Yankees a draft pick because of his service time that he's accrued while being injured. So apparently the reason he's in the minor leagues, this is according to both Baseball America and Brian Hoke overnight, is not because they're holding him back to help them get a rookie of the year and a draft pick next year. It's because they think Verdugo's a better player, which is dumb. Uh, I mean, we can see with our own eyes. Yeah, Verdugo runs into some hits now and then. He'll run the ball down in the outfield. He's a good outfielder. And, I, I, you know, you know, the Yankees are prioritizing defense, I'm sure. But Mar- the Martian is not a bad outfielder. I mean, he didn't play well in that one game that he got called up. And, and the end of the game, uh, obviously, there was a throw home that he kind of hesitated on. But he should make up for that in offensive ba- value, just being more of a hitter than Verdugo and being a switch hitter. But hopefully we see him soon. Uh, Verdugo seems healthy. He seems to be hitting better since he switched his batting gloves. So honestly, if, if you're asking me like under oath, there's a chance that the Yankees might not call up Dominguez this year at all, and they're just going to run with Verdugo, which I find asinine because I want to get this kid at bats. But, you know, that's life. That's life as a sports fan. There's always things that we would do differently as the team owner or the team GM than they decide to do. But, you know, it is what it is. We got to still root for the team and hope they got it right. You know, hopefully Verdugo comes up big uh, and hopefully we see the Martian eventually. Uh, I got a new show coming out. Uh, I've been getting pressured over the last few years to do a football show. Now, you guys know if you watch me that I spend so much time doing baseball stuff that I'm not like the hugest football fan. I was when I was growing up. But uh, I've got a couple of friends that are uh, big football fans, including Frankie Baseball, who we're going to delegate as Frankie Football for this. But we've got a new show coming out on Thursday called The New York Football Show. We're going to talk. I live in New York City. I cannot believe you had the balls to do it. Michael Kay made me almost spit my coffee out I was drinking in the ninth inning when Clay Holmes came in. And he goes, well, this isn't a safe situation. And when he said that, I almost spit out my coffee because I was thinking to myself, no, but it's a, a lose situation. Anyway, I just wanted to kind of like drop that on you. And, uh, you know, <laughs> I thought it was kind of funny. Anyhow, uh, go Yanks and uh, keep up the good work with your, uh, with your show, the Pinstripe Territory. Yeah, I just remember thinking how bad a sign it was that I was that nervous with a five-run lead and a runner on first base and already one out in the inning. It seems like every time that Clay Holmes comes in to pitch, 
he either walks somebody or gives up an extra base hit or gives up a couple of singles. He doesn't allow many home runs, which I get. The Yankees, uh, they are a fan of him keeping the ball in the ballpark. But he allows very hard contact, and he's just very hittable. I don't know. Maybe he needs to throw the breaking ball more. Maybe he needs another pitch. It's too late in the season for that. But I just think that we should have more confidence in our closer. And right now, I don't have a lot. And, uh, you know, imagine how we're going to feel when they bring him in in a playoff game with a one-run lead in the ninth inning or even in extra innings. Uh, It's just going to be, you know, meltdown city. And uh, we're all going to need cardiac specialists uh, when this postseason is over. Oh, hi, Derek. This is Hugh from Bay Ridge, Brooklyn. I'm very concerned that you are so concerned about Verdugo's feelings. Who cares about how he feels if he's going to sulk around the dugout? It wouldn't surprise me if he does. But let's get the Martian in there. Let's pump for the Martian. I don't want him sitting on the bench, and, uh, and I don't want him sitting in the minors. Let's play our best hitters. I'm actually not concerned at all with Verdugo's feelings. Yesterday when I was talking to Max Goodman, Max suggested that Verdugo wouldn't be happy and you know could cause a bit of a problem if he ends up on the bench for Dominguez. And if that happens, honestly, just cut him, right? I mean, you don't need him. You got a better fourth outfielder in Trent Grisham. But I, I think that the Yankees are definitely watching out for this guy's uh, feelings. And um, look, I mean, it's clear that Dominguez has more upside than Verdugo. But they like Verdugo's defense. You know, he's friends with Aaron Judge. Like, that goes a long way. I just think that there's, like, politics, basically, that are keeping Dominguez in the minor leagues. And I I think it's BS because in professional sports, no matter what the sport is, the best players should play. I think we all agree on that. Well, the Yankees don't agree, I guess. Big shout out to America's number one meal kit, HelloFresh, for helping us eat good during this busy time of the year for us. With HelloFresh, you get pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. It's home cooking made easy, fun, and affordable. HelloFresh makes it easy, even for picky eaters like Scott. There's a changing menu of 50 recipes to choose from each week. Customize it to fit your taste. There's protein and veggie swap options, too. The recipes are easy to follow. Just choose your delivery day, open your box, cook, and eat. My house is busy with sports, but family dinners are important. My fam eats better, healthier, and we cook so much easier with HelloFresh. And for a limited time, kids eat free. Go to HelloFresh.com slash FTKids to unlock this exclusive offer. One free kids meal per box for two months while subscription is active. That's free kids meals just by going to HelloFresh.com dot com slash ft kids hey derek bobby the bear down here in atlanta i wanted to chime in on two things number one the martian uh these pessimistic yankee fans need to get a grip jeez he will get up here he will okay he's gonna go ahead and be ready he's gonna go ahead and hit a homer off the astros pitching in the playoffs and Life goes on. You know, he will most definitely get here. Number two, Jazz. Wow. What a performance by that guy yesterday. I mean, he almost got himself killed out there trying to catch that ball. I saw those uh, concrete blocks uh, below the net, and I started to get nervous. But I'm glad that he's good. Um I'm wondering what your thoughts are. If we win the World Series with Jazz, and if Augustine Ramirez uh, becomes three quarters of the player that Jorge Posada was, who would win that trade? That's an interesting hypothetical question. First, I'll, I'll tackle the Dominguez thing. I do have confidence that he will be up at some point, but... You know, are they going to play him? Are they going to have the cojones to sit Verdugo and play Dominguez? That's my concern. I don't know if they will. Now, Jazz Chisholm has been fantastic. He's got a swing that is perfectly tailored for Yankee Stadium. He has shown flashes of brilliance at third base. And I think next year he might even move to second base to replace Glaber Torres if the Yankees don't bring him back. Now, Glaber's been playing really good over the last month or so. 
but I'd still doubt that they're going to re-sign him, although stranger things have happened. Now back to the Chisholm thing. If Augustine Ramirez becomes three quarters of the player that Jorge Posada was uh, and the Yankees win a World Series with Jazz, I still make the trade. Augustine Ramirez has a potential all-star bat. Uh, I I have no doubt he's going to hit in the major leagues. The question has been about his defense, and it's very difficult for bad defensive catchers to become good. Look at Jesus Montero, right? I mean, there was all that discussion about how he was our number one prospect and he was going to be a future Hall of Famer, the heir apparent, all that stuff. He got traded, never really did much. Um, But I think that you take the World Series, you know, a World Series, look, you, you trade what you have to trade to, to get a World Series. The Cubs dealt Glaber Torres to the Yankees as part of the Araldus Chapman deal, and they have not had any concerns about missing Glaber Torres over the last several years when he's put up good numbers because they got a championship out of it. So I think you always take the championship. Yeah, Derek, Robert here. I hear what you're saying about Chisholm you know, you're worried he's going to get hurt that he's playing so hard. Leave him alone. He's like one of the few guys on the team that really goes all out all the time. Leave him alone, please. <laughs> if he plays that hard all the time, I ain't got no problem with it. You know, I like to see, I, I liked what I saw in Verdugo tonight, too, legging out that chopper down the line. I think there's a line, uh, and it might be a fine line, between playing hard and playing reckless. I want Chisholm to continue to play hard, but I also don't want him to be reckless. We don't need him running into walls or going into home plate uh, head first. Those two things are, you know, things that could get him hurt and adversely affect the team. But I appreciate all the hustle and how hard he plays, so there's that. Now, when you talk about Verdugo... Uh, It's interesting how a guy's hustle improves when there's a hot prospect behind him in the minor leagues and when the fans are calling for him to be replaced. It's funny how that gets a guy in gear, right? But, uh, yeah, I I like that he beat out that chopper, and hopefully he continues to play hard. Nothing wrong with Verdugo if he continues to play well. Uh, I just want the Yankees to win. If that's with the Martian, it's with the Martian. If it's with Verdugo, it's with Verdugo. I want that banner on my wall that says 2024 World Series champions. I want to be part of the World Series video, which I think I would be if the Yankees somehow win this thing. So let's go ahead and root for everybody to succeed, whether we want them in there or not. Yeah, it's me again. Yeah, I forgot to add that uh, the only thing about Chisholm that I'd like to see toned down is his sliding head first into bases. We've been down that road before with that, with this uh, subject. And you agree with that, I know, too. And he's, I, that's what I'd like to see on his stolen bases today in the second and third. He slid feet first both times. It's all you need. It's been proven that you get there just as fast anyway that way, or even just standing up. Of course, when you're stealing a base, you don't steal them standing up. I mean, you're absolutely right. Going in feet first is just as fast. The issue that I think players like is they like to do that swim move or whatever where they're, you know, they have dexterity over their hands and they're trying to avoid the tag by, you know, pulling their arm in and then reaching for the bag at the last minute. You know, I think Jazz is fast enough that he shouldn't have to do that most of the time. But uh, yeah, I agree with you. Go feet first when possible. All right, everybody, thanks for calling in. Quick Nostra Derek prediction. I might point out that yesterday's prediction was seven strikeouts for Garrett Cole, and that was a hit. He had nine. So let's get to today's prediction. What will it be? Today's prediction. I think that Anthony Volpe is going to get two hits. Multi-hit game. I like the way he's been swinging the bat the last couple of days. I think that he's going to turn it back on and pick up a multi-hit game today against the Rangers. And I also think that the Yankees are going to win. So we got two predictions today. I'll see you after the game. game If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like and give us a subscribe. It helps other Yankees fans find the channel. We're also on all your favorite podcast platforms and social media. Join the community. Have some fun. We're here after every game. 
This is Pinstripe Territory.